Yeah, I mean, because you just heard all these Republicans just be like, throw the book at literally everyone, you mm -hmm. know, and 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 lauding the idea that you would throw the book and give maximum sentences for even the most um, minor of crimes, but mi even minor of them. And like that, that's kind of how we end up with the biggest prison population yes. in the developed world or in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, but it didn't, it didn't make us safer. I mean, we should actually have the safest country in the world with 2 million people behind bars. I mean, we have 5% of the world's population and between 20 and 25% of the world's prison population. So that should mean we have the safest country. We should not be seeing mass shootings at the rate that we are. We should not be seeing any mass shootings. We should be, not be seeing all of the crime and violence that dominates the headlines. Uh, you know, we should not be, you know, we should have a society in which everybody is happy and well taken care of if mm. prisons actually worked to make us safer and throwing the book at people actually worked. It's, yeah, it's almost like they don't work. <laughs> if we could only... <laughs> I'm sure we're almost there. Like, I'm sure, like, like we're super close to prison innovation. If we could just get, like, you know, Zuckerberg or Musk on it, you know, like, it's we're just right around the corner. I performed uh, uh, right before COVID. I performed in a maximum security prison. I did a stand up comedy show. Yes. Oh. And man, it's one of those things that you're like, oh, everyone should have to go walk through a high security prison to see what it's actually like mm -hmm. um it, it was a little nicer than most of the clubs i perform at but it was very <laughs> it was it was it was one of the most harrowing experiences of my life the host quit on the way in because she was so overwhelmed by you know the the it was dirty and and claustrophobic and the thought of anyone going through that and coming out better uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it was, it was your host was, quit was, like was, in protest. I'm sorry. No, no, no not in protest. I, uh, comedians are not that noble. Uh, <laughs> just, just was, just felt like, like scared. The whole environment just felt like yeah. scary and sad. And it was overwhelming. It was just emotionally yeah. overwhelming going through that third metal detector and seeing just the, the slices of the worst bread you've ever seen being eaten. And it, it yeah. was a lot. And it's something that if you are going to buy into the prison system and you've never been to a fucking maximum security prison, that that's that, you know, you should go. You have to go there because you mm -hmm. just don't conceptualize it. We quarantined for a month. Everyone went fucking nuts. And then right. they think Ooh. they're going to put mm -hmm. someone behind bars for 30 years. It's it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. OK, so you did mention one of the myths, which is prisons. I guess are are not keeping us safer because otherwise we would have an incredible quality of life because we have so many people behind bars. What are some of the other myths specifically that you feel like are the strongest and the hardest to shake that kind of like, you know, um, really undergird this system that has got such a stronghold on us? So the, some of the other myths also tie into this idea of public safety. Like if, with that, if um, prisons keep us safe from murder, prisons keep us safe from rape. And what we have to remember first and foremost is that arrest and prosecution and imprisonment, if they happen, happen after harm has occurred. It doesn't happen before. And I'm not advocating that we go around thought policing people and preemptively arresting people, but they happen after. And most people would rather their loved one not have been murdered or that they not have been assaulted or sexually assaulted than have to say, well, at least this person might go to prison. And then right. when we actually look at the statistics, which politicians don't like to do when they don't favor their, um, their stances, is that we see that prisons and policing actually do a horrible job of even addressing the serious harms like murders and rapes that occur. I mean, one um, only one third or two, only two thirds of murders are actually solved in the United States. And solved means you've identified somebody, not necessarily that something has happened to them or they've been held accountable or they've gone to prison. It might right. be like, oh, we finally figured out who murdered Nelly? You know, it's that guy that died four years ago. Okay, right. the end. Um, or oh, we figured out who murdered Nelly, but he fled the country. Okay, the end. So I mean, and that number is even smaller in communities of color where the police don't take deaths as seriously. 
And it's the same thing with rapes. And I mean, the statistics are horrifying. I mean, what we saw, you know, with the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, going back to what you were talking about earlier with the Supreme Court, and even earlier with the Clarence Thomas hearings was this total disregard yes. of sexual assault, sexual harassment, sexual abuse of women. And we see this with the policing and prison system as well. I mean, for every 1,000 rapes that happen, only one third get reported to the police. So people are not coming forward and reporting uh, what happened to them to the police. And then of that, only 50 of those reports actually lead to an arrest. So can you imagine having to go to the precinct and telling these stoic police officers over and over and over what happened to you and having them ask you questions like, what were you wearing? Were you coming home late at night? You know, uh, were you drunk? Did you have a relationship? Maybe you were flirting. And of those 50 arrests, only 25 results in a conviction. Right. So prisons don't keep us safe from rape either. Yeah. No, I mean, and actually those two things are linked. I remember when I, I, I learned that, like, fucking, of course, our, pol- our policing and prison system mm-hmm. treats rapists like it's some other crime like no 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 that's a special crime see you know like sexual crimes is people who are like really into sex you know like no they're violent people Mm -hmm. and often turn out to be murderers and in fact if you had taken the rape case seriously you would have fucking solved the murder case i'm sorry i'm getting very excited because this is angers me Mm -hmm. but actually that's so interesting but that's not the way our male dominated Mm -hmm. uh you know criminal justice system often treats uh, rape as a this could get worse. What's going on, Fran Tifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it. 